Now we come to uh, another topic which is called the DNS. It stands for the Domain Name Services. Basically, what is it exactly? So it is basically URL to IP mapping. So for example, uh, the IP address 1.1.1 .1 .1, uh, is pretty pretty simple one, but you know there can be complex IP addresses. We want all the instead of the the whole communication over the internet basically uses the IP addresses, but it's very difficult to remember and the IP addresses. It's much easier for us to remember, for example, abc.com or xyz.com or google.com or facebook.com or spartancontrols.com or whatever company name.com. It's much easier for us to remember those uh, names. So basically, these are called domain names. So basically, uh, you know, so basically how how does it happen? You know, this URL to IP mapping, how does it happen? So basically, for example, let's suppose we have uh, a laptop and basically it wants to send the data to xyz.com. So xyz.com basically is actually the IP address of this xyz.com is 5.5.5.5 for example. But our computer does not know about the IP address of this. What our computer knows is just simply uh, xyz.com, right? So for example, in the browser, we just type in xyz.com. We need to have its IP address. So basically what will happen uh, we want the IP address. So the first step that happens is this computer laptop will check in its own DNS cache. So basically DNS cache is a small area in the RAM uh, of the of each laptop where uh, all the re all the recently uh, used URL to IP address mappings are present. This is called a DNS cache. So xyz.com it will be checked here in the DNS cache. Does it exist here? No, it not found in the local cache. So what will happen? that this PC, this laptop will forward the request to the company's DNS server. How does this computer know that what is my company's DNS server? In the TCP IP address settings, we would have mentioned the DNS server name uh, into the TCP IP settings. So basically the request is forwarded to company DNS server uh, asking what is basically xyz.com. So what will happen once the request comes into company DNS server, it will each DNS server has its own database. For example, abc.com is 1.1.1, pqr.com is 6.6.6, .6 and just so, so, so on and so forth. So basically, is, is xyz.com listed in its database? No. So it basically, it's not found here. So what the company DNS server will do, it will forward the request to the ISP DNS. ISP in this, in our case, can be TELUS or Shaw or any uh, big uh, vendor which is providing the ISP services. Uh, now, once the request goes into the ISP DNS server, it will again, the ISP DNS server will check xyz.com in its own database. And if it is not found here, so the request will be forwarded to the finally the root DNS server. This root DNS servers are very big servers in the world. Basically, if, there, if no, none of the DNS servers can respond to the DNS query, all the records are present finally into, the D, into this DNS server. So basically, xyz.com will be found here. Its IP address is 5.5.5.5. .5. It will be returned back. And the moment it is returned back to the uh, to the requesting server, the ISP's DNS server, it will make an addition into its own database that xyz.com was 5.5.5.5. .5. And then it will also send the request back that you know xyz.com was 5.5.5 .5 because the request came actually from here. When the when when request reaches here, this xyz.com is added into the local database of the company's DNS and also it is the the xyz.com IP address is forwarded to uh, this laptop. So basically this is how uh, all the subsequent DNS servers keep on updating their caches and finally the PC's cache is updated. Now the PC, the laptop knows that the xyz.com is 5.5.5. .5. It will instantly add this into its own local DNS cache 5.5.5. .5. So that next time it needs to, the laptop needs to go to xyz.com. It will simply look it into the local DNS cache. It doesn't need to go to the whole lot of this process. You know, it will just simply find it into a local DNS cache. And now, since this laptop has uh, the IP address of this computer, it will simply initiate the communication and send its request to five, you know, 5.5.5 .5 .5 to xyz.com. So this is how basically the whole uh, DNS communication happens. Uh, in our case, uh, we need to just mention our company's DNS server. Uh, in each company has its own DNS server configured. So basically, in our case, for example, it is 192.168.0.10.
in in any other company this can be a different dns server so uh, those dns servers are configured automatically to contact to the isp's dns and the isp's dns servers are configured to uh, communicate to whatever the level of the dns servers they have so this is how basically uh, the dns is used uh, if our uh, if in our plc uh, basically we are using host names so we need to know we need to have uh, a mechanism from where we should know that whatever host name for example uh, plc north one we want to access when the P, you know we need to mention the dns server as, as well so that our request first of all goes to the dns server and dns server will reply back to with the correct IP address for PLC North One dot PLC North One, and from from there, the uh, PLC will initiate another request uh, for using the IP address. So basically, as I told you, uh, in PLCs usually we don't use the DNS uh, as much, but in case if it is used, we need to have the DNS server mentioned somewhere in the PLC settings. Right. So that is all about it. And if you have any questions, uh, do let me know. Right. Thank you very much.